now it's time for the next talk about Tor. Uh, well, p these people are not designing Tor, they are using Tor for their application, which allows you to create a virtual network over a Tor connection. So, well, you want this one? Just I hand the mic to them and talk. <laughs> Okay, welcome everybody to our talk about uh, Onion Cat. Uh, first, uh, before we start, we just introduce ourselves. Uh, that's me, my name is Bernhard Fischer. Uh, I'm a lecturer at the University of uh, St. Pölten in Austria. Uh, and my colleague is uh, Daniel Haslinger, he's a student there, and we are both uh, in the um, area of IT security, uh, operating systems, and programming, and stuff like that. And we are both uh, have been in the ISP uh, area for several years. So uh, we are now going to talk about OnionCAT. Uh, just uh, a few words before. Uh, OnionCAT started at the uh, 23rd, um, 23rd Congress here two years ago. Uh, we both like Tor very much and we have been interested in this project and watching, in, watching it uh, for years before and we had a talk together and in a bar with a beer and we said it would be really nice if we could contribute to the Tor project. So we're really proud that we can present this today. <clears throat> okay, first uh, let's uh, have a look at what uh, we are going to talk about. Um, first, uh, we'd like to introduce uh, the hidden services uh, a little bit in detail for you. I don't know if anybody is familiar with this. Uh, we won't talk about Tor itself because uh, I assume everybody in here knows what Tor is and especially the speaker before Roger gave you an overview about Tor and I think there is no, no man in the world who could explain more about Tor than Roger. Okay, next uh, we dig into details of OnionCAT. Uh, we'll show you how it works, what the basic ideas is and give you an architectural overview of the internals. Uh, well, yes, then next we have the applications to give you an idea about uh, what OnionCAT can be used for and what we would like that OnionCAT will be used for. And, well, last but not least, bootstrapping OnionCAT. OnionCAT is a really small project currently, it's just us two. And uh, I talked uh, with lots of people here in the Congress, but it's still a really small uh, user group, so we hope that uh, we have some ideas to give you to use on OnionCAT in a way that the community grows. Okay, so let's have a look at hidden services. Yeah, uh, a hidden service is a location hidden service inside the Tor network. You can only access it through the Tor network. Uh, a few months ago, uh, we installed such a service in a garage somewhere. Uh, it is also physically hidden. And uh, the hidden services within the Tor network can be accessed without knowing uh, where they are. So uh, when client and server want to communicate, they, must, uh, they don't have to know either the location of the server or of the client. Uh, the connections typically stay within Tor and they do not need the Tor typical exit nodes which is a very vital thing for the hidden services and the security within. So how do the client and the server find each other? Uh, to stay simple, the server and the client connect through uh, their very own Tor circuit uh, to a rendezvous node which exchange the data between it. Uh, in fact, this is a little bit more complicated, but this, this, uh, this descri describes the technology quite well. So the server first, raises a connection to a so-called rendezvous node. The client does this also. You see the typical uh, circuit that uh, every Tor client or every Tor application uses. And then uh, the rendezvous node just sticks the two together and exchange the data between them. Twice quite slow, so. Takes a while. The, the, the presentation is give me a cross tour. <laughs> no, not really. So, how are hidden services used? 
If you need to access a hidden service, you need a running Tor installation and a software that uses the Tor SOX interface, uh, either through libraries that are aware, aware from SOX or maybe a software that uses the Tor SOX Ethernet uh, interface directly. Um, if an Onion address has been detected, Tor will simply intercept the request and will route the connection into the Tor network to the hidden service as shown before. Oh, just a moment. It was too quick. Owned by technology. <laughs> so, here we are. <laughs> Damn it. Okay. Uh, Look at me. <laughs> uh, as soon as you enter the Onion key or the Onion address uh, inside an application that uses Tor or the SOX interface uh, within Tor, you just enter the Onion key uh, to a web browser, for example, into Ice Weasel or so on, and uh, the interception will be done by Tor, and you will be routed to the service. So I hope it works now. Yeah. So the benefits of hidden locations uh, or location hidden services is that you do not need exit nodes anymore. This is good because uh, exit nodes are a very problematic thing. Uh, in fact, very, a very small amount of uh, people want to be an exit node. Uh, that's depending on the country they may live in. And uh, these connections the exit nodes make into the real internet are unencrypted. So, hidden services provide some kind of end-to-end -end encryption, which would be not true if you use exit nodes for your connections. So, what's wrong with those hidden services? They also have a catch. The only rules are hard to remember. This is a fact which we try to resolve. Uh, we talk about it later. The SOX interface is not always easy to use. You have to for example, you have to configure your applications to your SOX. This might require some knowledge on this topic. Uh, also, the SOX does only transport TCP IP. And last but not least, an uh, issue we couldn't resolve in our project is that hidden services are damn slow. So, what's our goal on these hidden services? Uh, we provide an easy and transparent way uh, to use hidden services. Hidden services improve an individual's privacy enormous. So our intention is to make it usable for a broad amount of users out there. And so maybe uh, get Tor and the hidden services a little boost. Our first solution to this problem, uh, I mentioned it on the onion keys, which are hard to remember, was implement to implement a TCP-based name service. As soon as a hidden service rule is used, the Tor, as a Tor, uses a public and private key authentication to route it to the hidden services and to authenticate it. So, um, due to this behavior, uh, phishing is not possible anymore. Yeah, let's take a look. Uh, sorry. Uh, the next thing is uh, we do not violates hidden services uh, with our solution, which could be a problem if you use some kind of DNS in there without any interception before. Um, there is also a really well-known uh, service out there for name resolution. It's the DNS system. And so reinventing the wheel wasn't an option for us. Okay. Um... Now let's uh, dig into details what Onion Cut really does. So, first some basics. Uh, we uh, we'd like to provide an uh, IP transparent interface. What SOX definitely not is. It's a TCP interface. So uh, we'd like to have an IP transparent interface. And uh, obviously there is uh, the TANTAP driver available on more or less all operating systems. Also on Windows, of course. The OpenVPN guys did a good job there. Um, yes, okay, ton top devices are virtual interfaces, virtual network interfaces. They are just, they stay on your host. 
So it's, it's like an Ethernet, but it's just virtual. You can put there an IP address, you can ping the IP address, you can, well, do everything what you can do with a normal uh, uh, Ethernet inter interface also. So, um, well, yes, that's uh, one, one part. We, we, we configure this ton, ton device or ton tap device, and so we have uh, to the operating system side uh, and um, a, a native layer two or layer three interface. So all packets arriving to the kernel from wherever they could arrive, of course, from other ethernets or other ton top drivers or wherever, are routed by the kernel uh, uh, of, uh, based on the kernel's routing table, and if there is an entry to the top device, it will route the packets to the top device. On the other, th on the other end of the top device, there is the onion cat. So, uh, well, you have the ton device, the top device, whatever, and you configure an IP address, and so you can send packets there. Uh, the basic, to give you a basic idea, I show you a picture with SoCat. I think uh, most of you know SoCat. Maybe if you don't know SoCat, you know NetCat. How many people know NetCat? Okay, <laughs> not everybody, but okay. So, uh, what to? Give a quick introduction to SoCat. SoCat uh, is, is, is nothing else than a packet forwarder between file descriptors. And in Unix, every I.O. channel you can uh, think, think of like files, like TCB sockets, like, uh, well, UDP, like pipes, what, what, what are, whatever you, you imagine, uh, are based on file descriptors. So you can forward data between them in the, in the user land. Okay, and what SoCat does, it opens, uh, it opens a, a, an I.O. channel on one hand and another I.O. channel on the other end and then just forwards data between them. So there could be on one end a file, on the other end a pipe, or on one end a file, on the other end a, a network device or a ton top device. And that's where our idea came from. We uh, took SoCat and configured it that it has on one end the ton top driver. So there is an interface I can an I assign an IP address to. Uh, luckily, SoCat, what uh, uh, NetCat not does, is uh, it provides a SOX4A interface on the other end. So I can configure SoCat in a way that there is on one end of SoCat a ton top device and on the other end a SOX4A device and device, well, SOCat. And uh, of course, I use this SOX for a device to connect to the Tor proxy because the Tor proxy's interface is SOX. Okay, uh, on the other end, there this 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 gray shaped uh, uh, figure here is is the Tor network. So on the other end is also a Tor uh, node where we configure the hidden service. So the hidden service accepts um, TCP so TCP sockets. So we have to configure the SOCAT in that way that it accepts on one end TCP sockets, uh, TCP connections, and it opens again a ton top device on the other end. So what we can do with this setup now is assign an IP address with if config here, assign an IP address with if config here, and we can start to ping to, well, do everything you can do with IP, okay? That's the basic idea, but SOCAT, uh, does nothing dynamically. That's a, a manual setup. You have to set up everything manually. Install this, install this, configure IP address here and here and here and so on. Yeah? Okay, it's just to give you an idea. So let's look at the next slide. Uh, what I, uh, our idea was, uh, we uh, want to provide a piece of software that does everything automatically. In a way that if you plug it in, you automatically get part of the community. That's not possible with this SoCat way. So what we needed is some kind of migration from those uh, .onion URLs to some other kind of addressing method. And of course, we are working with ton devices, so the, the addressing method of choice is IP, okay? So we use especially IPv6, uh, IPv6. You will see later why this is the case. Well, uh, why do we want to need, uh, do we want to use IP addresses? Well, you know, every, every service in the world is based on IP. So if we, we use IP, we can also provide every service to work with OnionCat. And the first, some slides before we said, okay, .onion URLs are really hard to recognize. So if we have IP, there is a way to make 
to make IP addresses more rememberable, this, this DNS. Okay. So uh, there is a, another part, uh, Daniel already mentioned, the, uh, the Onion URLs provide some kind of authentication. They, they are strong related to a, to a specific hidden service, and that's what we don't want to lose because it's a feature. So if you have an Onion URL and you connect to this service, you, you, you can be sure because the Tor network guarantees that you're really connected to this specific Onion uh, to this specific uh, hidden service and, and not somewhere else. That's that what he said about phishing. It's not possible. Okay, let's see uh, how we did this migration. Okay, let's look behind the scenes of the migration now. Uh, we first have the onion key we mentioned. An onion key is a base uh, 32 encoded hash of the hidden service public key. So we have the hidden service private key and the public key is generated out of the private key, so it's the key pair, in fact. We calculate an SHA1 hash out of the public key, or Tor does it, and uh, now we have a 160-bit uh, bit hash of it. 80 bits of this 160-bit we convert through base 32, and we get an onion address. This is how the onion addresses are created. So how do we come to the IPv6 addresses here? This is the IPv6 local address format. We have the prefix, we have the global ID subnet and uh, the interface ID. And we want to get the onion cat addressing scheme. No, no. We just use the prefix and the global ID and we have 48 bits for our new prefix uh, for the online cats addressing. And the rest, the 16-bit subnet and the 64-bit interface ID, are the 80 bits of the hidden service key. As we, could, uh, we can use now the hidden service key and put it into the 80 bits uh, we get out of the subnet and the interface ID. So we just stripped out the subnet thing and pack everything inside it. So this is our new OnlyCat locator, and this is the IP address uh, we get out of this migration. And uh, the best thing on it, it is definitely worldwide unique, and this provides the ability for uh, automatic configuration as soon as you start OnlyCat. Okay, uh, that, this IP address migration is the most important thing of all that stuff. On this is everything else based. The rest is just coding, coding a piece of software which does the migration and uh, okay. So let's have a look what the coding stuff does. Uh, what does OnionCat internally? It opens a ton top device. It then reads from the back end of the ton top device through the kernel the IP packets which are coming in, coming in there through the routing table. Okay, then I read the IP header, I extract the destination IP address, then I can easily translate it to the .onion URL because the least significant 80 bits are, are in fact reflecting the, the onion ID directly. Uh, with this information I can connect to Tor to the SOX interface and request a hidden service connection. Tor does this itself and someone it returns and says, okay, connection is open, let's forward packets. Okay, that's the last, point, the last point here. I'm just forwarding packets to this connection, which has, has of course, this IP address as destination address. Okay, that looks like uh, the figure before, just with a little difference. There we have now three Tor proxies and three Onion Cats. It's not limited to three, of course, it can be uh, two to the power of 80, of course, in theory, yeah, okay. So we have uh, not anymore this SoCat part here, we have Onion Cat, that's so cat is, is, is the father of the name of Onion Cat, of course. So uh, that's Onion Cat. Onion Cat creates the ton top device. It assigns the IP address itself. The IP address is, uh, is, is determined from the local hidden service, which is configured here. And all the same stuff happens on the other Onion Cats. So each Onion Cat here is associated with a specific hidden service here with a specific IP address for this hidden service. So if a, a packet comes in here, 
Anuncat does the translation stuff, connects connect through the hidden service here, and packets are forwarded to this. And the, and, and, and the rest does the kernel for us. We don't have to do anymore. The kernel receives packets and does with the packets as it does usual. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's look a bit into details of OnionCat. It's a multi-threaded application. Uh, the most important thing is there is a peer list. We keep uh, track in this peer list of which hidden services are currently connected, which IP addresses are assigned to them, which, we, uh, which onion URLs and all that stuff. Then there are two uh, main threads which, which are doing the data exchange, one on the, on the receiving side and one on the sending side. Then uh, there are two threads for accepting and initiating, uh, for accepting incoming and initiating outgoing connections. Uh, and last but not least, there are some supporting threads around. Okay. So uh, the next picture shows you uh, what OnionCat internally looks like. There, on the one end, we have the local operating system, Linux or whatever. On the other end, there is the Tor network. The, the, that means that that's a Tor proxy, the local Tor proxy with the SOX interface, okay? So, and in between there sits OnionCat, and if we assume that connections are already established, as shown in the previous picture with the three OnionCats, uh, packets arrive here from the local operating system, that's the tunnel receiver thread, it extracts the destination IP address, looks it up in the peer list, and forwards it to the Tor network. In the other end, there happens more or less the same thing, but we don't have to look up anything in the peer list. If packets receive from the Tor network, we just forward it to the TAN device, and then it gets to the kernel. That's all. Okay, let's see what happens if uh, the connections are not established. There are two main threads involved in this. That's the SOX connector and the SOX uh, socket acceptor. The SOX connector gets active if uh, an IP address arrives on the tunnel end, which no, uh, no peer uh, is, uh, is found in the peer list, which means there is no, service, uh, no connection to a hidden service already available. Then uh, the tunnel receiver triggers this SOX connector. The SOX connector sends a SOX request to the Tor network. Tor network connects, okay, and someone the connect is okay, and when the connect is con okay, we enter this to the peer list, this new peer, and packet forwarding can start. In the other end, there happens more or less the same thing. There is a socket acceptor. It's listening on the hidden services virtual, no, not on the virtual, on the real port here, of course. And if connections from someone else comes in here, Tor forwards it to the listening port here. The socket, uh, the socket acceptor accepts this and enters the IP address in the peer list. There is a little problem here because we do not know the IP address of the other end, of course, because uh, packets, uh, the Tor network is, is based on TCB, so we, we just see more or less, we don't have IP information, so I have to receive one first initial packet that the socket acceptor can, uh, can extract the originating address, the source address of an IP uh, packet. So uh, this, uh, this um, well, this entrance here in the peer list can, uh, can done uh, not before a single packet arrives there, but okay. Uh, okay, that's more or less all that happens in OnionCat. So let's uh, have a look at applications. What can we now do with this? <clears throat> Well, basically there are two applications we can think about. One is the traditional VPN use. We, we can just use it as a VPN across Tor. It's like OpenVPN. I, I, I think most of you know OpenVPN. It's a VPN like VPNs work. Uh, you can do the same thing with OnionCat with the difference that you do not use the internet and traditional UDP, you use Tor as uh, a transport for your data. Uh, and there is a nice feature in Tor, uh, at least in, in the newer releases, or uh, it's not releases, it's, it's well before release, but you can download them. Uh, there is some kind of authorization built in in hidden services, so you can uh, uh, supply your VPN users with a username and a password, more or less, that only connections happen to people knowing this password, okay? Uh, the 
application we thinking about or we thought about when creating OnionCat is that we want to build a, well, a global anonymous internet. If you don't have this authorization stuff, everybody can connect to everyone else with OnionCat through Tor. And because of the hidden service, they, they can't locate, locate each other. They can uh, exchange data, but they don't know where they are and who they are. So that's, uh, that's the major uh, that's the major thing, we, uh, the major application of what we think what Onion Cut makes it use, useful. Okay, so if there is no authorization, you connect Onion Cut. Add this is here. Add it is currently configured. You got this unique IP address, and through this uh, migration scheme we presented before, every Onion Cut user, or, yes, yeah, every Onion Cut user can connect to every other Onion Cut user. Uh, well, and then what, you, what, what can you do with this? You can transport any kind of data you like. You, it can be UDP, it can IP, TCP, whatever, okay? Uh, well, yeah, there are some examples. You can mail, web, chat, IRC, be creative. What, whatever you can do with IP, okay. Uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, applications we also intended is that you can use uh, regular DNS to memorize uh, the IP addresses you have because uh, you couldn't, as we said before, you wouldn't uh, be able to use a regular DNS for the onion keys. Yeah, the modes of operation. Uh, we got two modes of operation. The first mode of operation uh, is the tune mode. It's based on layer three. And the second is the tap mode based on layer two. Uh, the TAN mode is uh, easier to use and intended for providing one or more services, but just on one machine. So there's no routing capability, you just have services on your machine, and uh, so, uh, OnionCat connects the services into the Tor network and into the hidden services. The TAP mode is used for the total encapsulation of virtual machines. So if you plan to use, uh, for example, VMware or an other uh, virtualization tool, you can provide virtual machines in there, and uh, you can host services in there, and through the tab mode, the connection is routed into these machines. Uh, these operation modes are intransparent to the opposite uh, onion cats, so they don't uh, know if the other end uses the tab or the tune mode. So this is just uh, easy to use in this way. Well, yes, that, that, that's, an important, uh, that's an important point, I think. If, it's, it's, uh, if you have a ton onion cat on one end, you can have a tap onion cat on the other end. They, they, they do not, that, that's what, what means intransparent. The, the other onion cat does not see the layer two information. So it's complete, completely layer three transparent, but not layer two. And that was a little bit tricky in uh, implementation because the tap device a actually is a layer two device. So I had to intercept the, neighbor discovery protocol of, uh, of, uh, of the IPv6 to, to acknowledge the, the neighbor discoveries from, from the kernel. So that's, that's the only part which is not transparent, otherwise it wouldn't work. Okay. Uh, the, question, uh, the question was if you can uh, set up the town mode with NAT on it. Uh, well, uh, I'm not sure as far as I know there is no NAT defined for IPv6. But if you use IPv4, I'm not sure, I, I don't know if there is NAT available for IPv6. But of course you can uh, configure tunneling, IPv4 tunneling, IPv4 uh, through IPv6. This will of course forward through OnionCat and on the IPv4 device then you can apply NAT, of course. Okay, uh, that's a, a simple application example uh, about the, the tap device configuration. Uh, there, what you see here, the, the brown shaded uh, figure is, is the, the, the host operating system, Linux or whatever. Uh, and uh, on this host operating system, you, you, you run the Tor and uh, the Onion Cat in tap mode, which means it provides a virtual tap device with all routing features tap devices have. 
And then what you uh, next have here is, it's just an example, you run two virtual machines with VMware, VirtualBox, whatever. Uh, and all these uh, virtual, uh, virtualization techniques also provide usually some kind of network interface. And what you next do is you configure a virtual bridge here with, for example, the bridge tools. I tested it with Linux, it works perfect. Uh, and you connect these, uh, these devices together. So what you do then is connect, connect these devices together so each of them will see each other on layer two. And then you configure your IPv6 Onion IP address within the vir virtual machine. Of course, not on the top device, but within the virtual machine. So, and uh, the nice uh, behavior of this is that these machines are really completely encapsulated into the Tor or into the, the Onion Cat network. Because that's, that's a little bit a problem which could occur that uh, you leak some information. That's, 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 not, uh, that's not because of Onion Cat. That's always if you provide hidden services. If you not configure that uh, these uh, services you provide in the right way, there may be information leaks. Okay? But if you have a completely encapsulated machine, there is no way to leak information. Of course, if you do not enter your username and who you are here, yeah? but not from outside from the kernel, IP, whatever tables. Okay? So, well, yes, this works really good. Uh, let's uh, talk about bootstrapping Onion Cat. How do we put some life into the Onion Cat scene? Which is the reason why we are here now. What is available now? Uh, we got the fully functional Onion Cat client to download. Uh, it runs on Linux, on OpenBSD, FreeBSD, and on Mac OS X. Uh, we couldn't manage to uh, port it to Windows right now because it's a, bit, a little tricky thing uh, to use the OpenVPN implementation. The OpenVPN guys did a very good job there. Uh, and you can get it on the URL we posted here. Uh, you don't have to remember it. You just uh, go on to the slides uh, we provide for downloading, or you no, maybe you got the proceedings. The, uh, yes, on the, if, if you go to the, to the, on, on the, on the homepage from the, from the conference, there is for each talk is a website. So if you go to our talks website, this uh, uh, URL you find there, so you don't have to write it down now. Okay. And we implemented uh, the very first service uh, for public use. It's the Onion Cat service registration website. You even don't have to remember the IPv6 address. <laughs> uh, and as soon as you're there, you can post your own services uh, so that everyone that uses Onion Cat has the ability to browse through. There's no search engine, so this is a very easy way in wiki style to get the locations where you can get further information or services within Onion Cat. Uh, a service we already uh, raised is an SMTP and MPP3 service. Uh, we will provide an interface to register your very own uh, mailbox there. It's not implemented right now, but you can just send us a mail to the mailing list and we uh, will try to give you access to the whole system. We implemented DNS. This is a very tricky thing. Uh, we just invented a new top-level domain called .cat. And uh, the DNS resolves the .cat addresses, but you can't just easily use it by, uh, by inserting the IPv6 address into your name D, uh, into your resolve.conf. So there is a little work to be done. Maybe anyone out there who is very familiar with DNS could help us there. That's bad. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, somebody mentioned that this uh, top-level domain already uh, is is in use for some country. I don't know. Uh, we, we we also didn't know. We maybe we change it. Is it is it a country? Or is it a free registration? Okay. Well. Catalonian. So much for gear graphics. Okay, we are sorry for that. <laughs> but 
It would be a nice name, yeah? Okay. Uh, and we already have an IRC service. Some guy in the USA implemented an IRC server for us. And you can join us there. The channel is uh, hash onion cat. And yeah, let's talk about different things there. I hope we can populate the channel a little bit. Well, the only thing is maybe you have to wait a little bit for answers because uh, we write very accurate, but Tor. <laughs> okay, what can you do now? The first thing is support the Tor project. Of course, uh, the most important thing is uh, the more users Tor has and the more users uh, Tor uh, can also use to provide the circuits, the, we think the, the speed will grow as soon as very ma uh, very ma uh, no, a huge amount of people use it. Also, use OnionCAT and provide OnionCAT services. This is very important for the bootstrapping, of course, because uh, the more services are available, the more interesting the whole thing will get for other people. And talk to us. We need feedback. Uh, we got a mailing list, OnionCAT at cypherpunk.at. Uh, we also will provide a mailing list inside OnionCAT uh, through our OnionCAT mail server. And please help us porting OnionCAT to other OSs, especially Windows, because as we already mentioned, the thing is the OpenVPN trick inside yeah. there. Port porting it to Windows is, I think, important. Uh, we, uh, we ported it ourselves to other operating systems, but as long as you stay in the Unix world, it's more or less easy. Uh, there is, uh, uh, well, some slight differences, but it's not uh, a big deal to do this. Uh, but porting it to Windows is, is something different. There is nothing like slash dev, so you can't connect to a character device or anything else. Well, uh, we hope that maybe here is somebody who could help us a little bit in porting it there. Uh, I think that we uh, should, need, uh, should use the, the top driver from OpenVPN. I also talk to some guys from OpenVPN and I get some help from there, but it's not easy because I don't have any idea how to write software on Windows. Okay. Well, okay, so uh, that's, uh, that's, that's the major part. Um, are there any questions? Could you maybe um, bridge that tap device you talked about? Could you maybe also bridge that with, uh, with a physical uh, as a net device? Yes, of course, of course. And then maybe provide an entire uh, land with onion? Yes, tape? yes, that also would work. But uh, if you uh, bridge it to uh, a, a complete network with physical machines, you have to set, you maybe have to set up routing. It, it depends on how, how you configure your network. But basically, it works, yes. Don't be shy. We speak German, so you can also ask in German. Uh, Open uh, VPN uh, is supposed to be uh, working in about half a year with uh, Tor when uh, they implement UDP support. I think it's in their uh, three-year roadmap, and it's supposed to be half a year away. Uh, do, do you mean that OpenVPN uh, Open VPN supports some kind of Tor transport? Is it? Uh, <laughs> no, uh, it's supposed to work, uh, well, kind of right out of the box while, when uh, Tor has the UDP and TCP support. Currently, it only has TCP support. OK, you mean if Tor supports UDP, then it would be possible to transport uh, uh, OpenVPN through Tor? Exactly, exactly. Yes, of course, that's, that, that's possible to do this. But uh, uh, OpenVPN is, is really a VPN. And if you transport uh, the, the OpenVPN uh, packets through Tor, they exit somewhere. The, the big benefit of OnionCAT is that we use hidden services, so the traffic never exits. And the second thing is that we have this kind of dynamic setup. We translate the hidden service URL to, uh, to an IPv IPv6 address, so you do, you, nobody has to do some setup. They are automatically connected together in a closed user group. Uh, 
is the software good enough to be distributed uh, for Linux distribution or uh, something like that for the moment? You mean if we build some packages for distributions? Yeah. Well, uh, the, the short answer is no. <laughs> uh, uh, a little bit longer answer, I talked to some guys here on the Congress and uh, I hope that we will get some packages for Debian and other distributions, but that's that's the, the, a real real hard work. That that's the most work. Coding coding this stuff is 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 the, the is is nothing compared to getting packages right and and writing autoconf and automake and all that stuff. So we do not have any packages currently. But uh, download it, configure it, configure, make, make, install. It's a, it's really it should work. There is is there are no much dependencies currently uh, currently, so so it should be easy for everybody who is familiar with compiling software to use it. Okay. Does a hidden service have to run on an Tor node actually, or is a Tor connection from my hidden service server sufficient? And the other question is, when can I reach uh, Pirate Bay via this <laughs> service? Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't understand the second question. <laughs> uh, but the first question, uh, uh, the first question, uh, basically you do not need hidden services on both ends. You, you just need it on one end, of course. But if you don't have uh, a hidden service configured, you, you, we cannot do this translation stuff because there is no onion URL. So you, you would have to configure the IP address on the one end, on the client end yourself. But it would work, yes. And for the second question, just ask the guys at the Pirate Bay to host the services into OnyaCat. It's that simple. <laughs> well, I just have a proposal for the top level domain. Just call it dog. <laughs> Uh, we we already uh, we also uh, thought about calling it snail because it's slow. <laughs> Onion snail. Is it also working through NAT? Uh, is it working through NAT? Uh, well, with the IPv4 I, extension, it should work with NAT. So if you, if you well, I yes, yes, it should work, of course. So, so uh, you don't have to have Tor and Onion Cat on the same host. Tor can be somewhere else. You just have to make sure that uh, the Onion Cat can reach the SOX port on uh, the SOX uh, interface of the Tor. Uh, of the Tor proxy, so if there is not in between it, it's, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter because, well, yeah, it's transparent this way. It's a TCP session. With some statical net entries and with the IPv4, it should be easily possible. No, dynamically, it would work through. Okay. No more questions, then I'd like to thank both of the speakers for their informative talk and a small applause.